everyone. On behalf of ADI and Finding Purpose, we welcome you to Futurescape, a brand new series of web events that talks about conscious design and its dire need in building more sustainable, adaptive, and a responsible post-pandemic world. Do check out the contest to participate, the link to which you can find in the description. ADI is a network representing professional interests of the Indian design community, creating a meaningful interface between design professionals, people as users, the industry, education institutions, students, and the policymakers. My name is Akhil Karanam. I'm the head of industry outreach at ADI Hyderabad and your host for today. Before we start today's session, we'd like all of you to take a quick poll to help us understand today's attendees better. Anshu, can we please have the poll, poll fired up? Please select one of these options and uh, press on submit. Again, as always, it's the design students who are the who are in maximum. Okay, moving ahead. Our speaker for today is Mr. Suresh Ariyat. Born in the southernmost state of India, Kerala, in 1973, Suresh, a graduate of the prestigious National Institute of Design, Ahmedabad, specialized in communication design, super specializing in animation film design in 1997, and thereafter pioneering a new chapter in the Indian animation scene with the numerous animated ads, shorts, and music videos produced by Famous House of Animation, a production house he established in 1998. Fast forward to 2009, Suresh founded Studio Ixaurus with his wife Neelima Ariyat and has gone to produce and direct over 400 cross-medium and animation films which have garnered him almost all respectable and credible awards for animation films on this planet, which include the president of India's uh, national award twice for the best animated film, once for Fisherwoman and Tuk Tuk in 2016 and in 2018 for his film Tokri. The Anarchy Crystal Award for his film Fate Line, the first ever for an Indian film, by the way. And uh, for starters, today's sir is going to kill me for saying this, but the Anarchy Crystal is to animation what the Oscar, Oscars are for the live action films. There, sir, I said it. <laughs> These and a gazillion other awards and official selections from Khan, or what we know it as Cans or Khans in India. Mm to Cleo, to the Golden Panda, and the list goes on and on and on, just like the number of hair strands in his facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> to all those attendees who have started to count, his, count the number of hair strands on his beard, he just has too many of both, the awards and the beard. <laughs> can stop. His stories come to life from the socio-cultural and political tradition of our country. People, habits, culture, and society are the ingredients that are part of his film's subjects. A strong streak of indigenous visual design is inherent in his craft of filmmaking, which along with his uninhibited Desi humor forms his inimitable style of storytelling. If you've enjoyed the Desi version of the hare and the tortoise story for the Amazon battery commercial, if you've enjoyed the adventurous ad adventures of the spacefaring spider in the beam, beam telecom or beam fiber or act, uh, act broadband the commercials, if you were enthralled by the shameless hunk Johnny Bravo dancing to Bollywood music. If you've seen any animation commercial since the late 90s that has made you smile because of its relatability or has made you laugh because of its quirkiness and absurdity, <laughs> here's the man you need to thank for being the single most reason for almost all of it. Let us please welcome our guest for today and the cutest looking animator in the country, Areshati <laughs> <laughs> It, thank you so much, Akhil. That was like, uh, I mean, it's really, 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 really nice of you to like study so much about our work and uh, talk about it. Really, really. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank really you. humbled. It's, it's an honor to be uh, speaking to you on this platform, sir. I've been a big fan of your work since yeah. childhood. Thank you so much, Akhil. I mean, it is, it's really wonderful to be, um, you know, sharing views and thoughts nowadays, uh, you know, when, especially, you know, when we have these uh, corona times, lockdown times, it's, it's nice to 
uh, interact with people and share one's experience, like I was telling you earlier. And it was, it, it is, um, it's no more, uh, you know, bound by the travel and, you know, the infrastructure, how you, you know, you need to reach a play, place, be in an auditorium, nothing. I mean, it, it, it is so much nicer uh, in, in, in one way to share your views with people. So yeah. blessing in disguise, I'd say. Yeah, in, in one way. Yeah. I mean, we, I, I, I feel good to share and I think uh, people also get to know what each, each, each of these people whose, whose work is known, what, what they think and how their uh, thought process work. So that's really nice. So welcome all of you. Uh, today, my talk is going to be very different from the regular uh, sort of, um, you know, uh, talks that I give where I, I show a lot of films. I, 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 I mean, a lot of fun films. I, I show a lot of slides and uh, talk about films entirely. Today, uh, the moment you to told me about the topic, it started, uh, made, made me think, what is the most important ingredient in design? I thought about it and what, what could make a difference for the future? And I couldn't think of anything else other than compassion. Maybe the years uh, I have been uh, around uh, in this field of design and filmmaking, et cetera, have triggered me to think that, you know, this is the most essential ingredient that can make a difference in, the, in, in terms of design for the future. Yeah, so I am going to take, a f I've, I've got a few slides to talk about, but one, one thing that started, uh, made, that made me think was, the other day, my mother-in-law um, wanted to connect uh, with her brother who is in Dubai. And now, now, nowadays in Dubai, um, uh, you cannot access WhatsApp calls, video calls or calls and, uh, you know, Facebook. And they, they don't know all those things. So Hangout was something that I want to install. And she's uh, around 70, not very old. Yeah. And... Um, to set it up, uh, of course, there is a Google ID that she required and, you know, Google, she doesn't remember the password and then I had to like kind of try and retrieve the password. And uh, the, the number that she had given uh, uh, for, uh, you know, at any sort of emergency to retrieve the account was her son who is in Bangor. And I had to, I had to call, uh, you know, send that message to him. I had to call him up and say that, you know, there is a passcode that has come to you and, you know, so you need to send it to me so I can reactivate the account. And I, I activated it and uh, I eventually, eventually it started uh, after a lot of work. And I was thinking that, you know, for a person who is not very old, who is very tech technologically, he, she's savvy. She's not like unsavvy or she hates digital technology. I was thinking that where are we headed in terms of designing? You know, where are we headed in terms of designing where a 70 year old person is not included in our, in our system design thinking? That it's, it's very normal for all of us young people, so-called so young people. We, we are very savvy with these things and you know, we find that everybody should be. If they are not, I mean, they just get out of the system. We, we, we have a certain amount of indifference to people when they are, you know, for old people. And none of these designs have uh, uh, thought about how an old person would, would maneuver with this. And with, with my help, I have spent maybe half an hour of my time. Her son, who is a busy person in Bangalore, had to spend maybe 10 minutes of his time. And everybody collectively gets a bit irritated also okay to for you to talk to your brother we have to so many people have to come together and i was thinking that today with the banking that has gone digital and how would she be struggling with banking you have to have a personal relationship manager so called everybody has a personal relationship manager with how much detail to re reveal to a person like that or not how would a 70 year old or a 80 year old know and you you as you you would know that you know in india the the cult, culture is that we leave our old parents back in town and we are all making making our living our making our comfortable living 
we we leave them back there and if they have an issue we irritatedly say okay do this do that do this do that okay okay and we guide them right i mean this is something that um we we we, we think uh, least we have absolutely no compassion as designers when we are designing these systems for the old people we think it is it it, it they don't matter anymore and i was telling uh, my mom though that you know you know we are soon becoming going to become the old generation and the insensitivity and the compassionless designing that is going on in the world is rampant to increase the speed and efficiency we are going so fast that you know soon we will be lost with bots and ai and all those things coming into our lives we don't know we would know what to whether we'll have our bank accounts which we thought is going to save us forever you know whether that is going to be accessible or somebody will vanish it we don't know because we have to we have to trust on systems that uh, are, have been so insensitively designed so today uh, i am not going to talk about solutions so much or i I'm, i may not have so many answers to all of you but i i just want to ask you a few questions as students especially if you are a design students interested in design i want to i want to share my thoughts and maybe provoke or instigate you all to to make a difference because you guys can if you if you think now onwards that you know you need to make a difference you can and that is that is the whole intent of my today's talk and i feel compassion is so lacking in the design that is going in 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 the, in the current times that we call great design there there is absolutely least amount of compassion in at various level i'm going to share this, my screen um yeah so i okay this is this is a frame that i drew okay five four years ago my my parents are right now they are 90 years old uh, okay this was when um they used to fly down uh, i and they my father used to really like uh, flying down to meet me going back because he i mean he 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 really liked that whole feeling of my son has sent me tickets and i'm going and you know then i would take them traveling here and there so and so it was it was very um very very nice for him to come and they used to manage it he, he i used to tell this uh, uh, actually just stand outside the place i will come and pick you up and sometimes i would ask special permission to the cops and they would let me go so that i can pick him up uh, from inside and you know it was very human t2 was built and once t2 is the is the most amazing airport it's a designer's fancy it is done to it it is satisfied all sort of uh, ticks in terms of good design and um, when my father was uh, leaving uh, he was so lost in that place my mother also I mean she just, i mean there was nobody to help because everything was uh, you know touch screen and you know you can you, you there are people roaming around but it's very difficult to grab their attention and you know how young people are arrogant towards the old that you know olds are you know tottering around and you know you you feel that you know they don't i mean if they need something they'll come and ask or whatever you know you never go and ask compassion you never go and ask you know do you need some help it's very rare and in a humongous airport like that earlier my father used to know in mumbai when he comes how to get out the straight line he takes and this and that and i used to say that achan i will give you some people to assist you he said no 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 i i'm okay because he it used to give him a kick and pride that you know at 85 he could actually maneuver around and travel uh, all by himself along with his wife so he he took pride so at t2 after the experience he he got so lost he said you know son for the next time onwards when you when you send please come with us i cannot handle it alone anymore so it was a statement of surrender uh which uh and had an airport that flaunts of 4 kilometers of art installations and you know it's the biggest art museum in that sense in across all airport which is one the biggest best designed airport in the world and so you know i feel that you know this is the way we are designing and we are thinking and where certain people don't count 
because it has become and it has become even more tech now where you know you 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 can just have your phone your boarding card and everything is in your phone and you just have to show the phone the the barcode on the phone and you can just track you know move people from old generation they don't they trust in paper they just trust in tangible material they feel absolutely lost without that so i was thinking whether designers why are we so head bound than heart bound i have i have i have seen this when we 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 as designers we always demarcate our work you know we when we design systems we we become very proper and you know we become like scientists almost we we keep our heart away and say that you know okay this is the target audience bahar mein jaye ho aur you know hope let the others go to hell you know but this is my target audience and i am going to focus on this and and this is what i am going to uh, focus upon and i'll find a solution for them and you know so on and so forth i don't know whether it has um, there is a certain amount of eliteness also with the design community which i find um, i have realized much later in life but you know i i feel it is definitely there that and um, that that sort of feeling that um, even while studying at nid uh, we were so protected and so secure and so we felt elite in that not so clean ugly dirty city of amdavad this is a beautifully designed campus with every facility and every greenery and the works and it is so well designed and there is absolutely no reflection of that sort of design outside the city so i i feel you know we kind of compartmentalize ourselves when we are designing things and we become insensitive somewhere we lose compassion for many other things that we need to consider when we are designing a solution which makes us very head bound people than heart bound uh which i feel is very very important i mean in in today's time and age uh it is very clear that uh in an organization as a leader because i also i'm an also entrepreneur i run a studio i i have always felt this that uh, eq works much better than iq emotional quotient is is much stronger than intelligence quotient so and it 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 works than the whole logical systematic system sort of person to a person who connects with people can bring certain amount of energy from people which which is very very different from a logical excel sheet driven uh, way of managing work and uh, i used to believe in that when i started and then i moved on to iq driven and then i'm i'm falling back to eq driven uh, way of working so i have seen that whole transition so i i have a feeling the right amount of balance of head and heart and compassion hence is a very very important ingredient to bring the heart part into your design um somewhere design is coupled with capitalism and commerce and you know that is what probably makes uh, designers a bit elite and you know we try and make things that sell so in this whole uh, quest of uh, you know like take make a waste uh, trip you know we are one of the humongous culprit culprits who take part in the make area you know we are very very active and that is really critical in terms of you know the creating an environment the way we the way we are headed today you know the, the way the depletion of our nature our surroundings everything i think we are we are not even compassionate to our environment this is this is where i feel um, uh, you know my mother uh, uses she's now 90 couple of years since last couple of years we we have to use adult diapers for my mother and in kerala they don't take adult the diapers used diapers they don't take the waste management municipality people don't take it so in my house i could see hills of uh, diapers which nobody takes we have to bribe somebody and now even if you bribe somebody where do they dump in some place can it go to landfill and landfill or when you put it in landfill also isn't it isn't it a uh, nasty thing to be in the landfill it is and 
I have I had to buy an incinerator, which is we with, along with my family, my sisters, and all, we bought an incinerator, which actually could burn and uh, you know uh, without so much of pollution, it can kind of dispose of six to seven diapers, and it's a full time occupation. So it's an expensive installation, and we, you have to also maintain it regularly, and all for. Uh, because my mother uses diaper because she has she can she has the problem of passing urine. How insensitive she always complains that you know that product is really bad. It gives her rashes, and we look at it how it goes out. It cannot be recycled. It becomes a contaminated waste, and uh, we have to deploy more and more money to uh, uh, which is again waste to you know re recycle it or you know degenerated and yet we are not completely successful in doing that is it a good design they are making billions with this product around the world babies of course cannot cry they cry but they cannot complain about uh, you know diapers so we take it that they are happy about it. we are also making a tons and tons of advertisements um, which also cost billions of dollars to push these products into the market and we as designers are hand in glove with the makers, correct? So where does compassion uh, come into the picture? Where do, where where have you counted this? You know, when you are when you are making this design, which is helping capitalism and commerce, and you're you never thought that you know this is a product that would create such a chaotic um, uh, you know plastic waste around the world. It's, it, it, it is the same with sanitary napkins. It's the same thing. You know, if the kind of money muscle that these companies have, they can easily manage to figure out an alternative uh, technology, which can be distributed in the same way amongst people, which, which can be recycled. So there is no compassion for the environment. Badly designed products just become trash. And of course, like I said, designers are partners in the take, make, waste movement. And this, this really is, the, uh, is something that I wanted to also touch upon that, you know, there's, no, there's absolutely no compassion to our living world. We talk about sustainability, sustainability. I feel that sustainability that you're talking about is how you are going to sustain. You know, it's not about how your company is going to sustain with the income and whatever. I don't think it's about the real meaning of sustainability. How, how can we make a product that, uh, that is circular? I mean, how can it how can it go back? When before um, industrial revolution, people used to take things in a very moderate fashion. They would save up things. I mean, whatever is left over, they would know how to reuse it. There was always that thing of uh, how a resource can be reused and never, you know, it goes out of the system. It's the circular uh, circularity of the products were very much uh, considered pre-industrial revolution. It's only post-industrial revolution that, you know, this whole thing of uh, take, make, waste movement started. And uh, we are continuing with it. Like we are going big time. We are, we are going ahead and doing it. But we can make a difference. This is where I think as designers, we can play a big role and trash can become treasure. And this is, this is actual, actual pitching that I'm doing for... <laughs> for the uh, trash dealers probably. Uh, but this is really, really important information that I wanted to share with the, the really robust, enthusiastic student community who want to, to make a difference, right? So this is what, I think this is what I'm, scrap dealer should ideally be a designer's closest ally and supplier. So here is the stats that I wanted to share with you, computers, mobile phones, and other electronic waste you say staggering 320 tons of gold and more than 7,500 tons of silver annually worldwide. One ton of scrap from discarded computers contains more gold than can be produced from 17 tons of gold ore. A mobile phone contains five to 10 times more gold than gold ore of the same size and system. This is not it. Uh, there is, there's so much of copper in the incinerated waste around the world that 
in the waste lies the the so much more copper that then it can be extracted from the earth the the, the ore that is the copper is lying in in in, in our in in our in, in, in extractable form is lesser than that is around the world as waste which is incinerated and you know dumped India loses 50% of the gold during crude dismantling, according to GSL, and solving the e-waste problem, an international initiative that finds solution to e-waste madness. It, this is a, definitely a design opportunity. And I think this whole deal of uh, waste to become trash, to become treasure, like your waste is eventually going to be your resource you shouldn't look down upon a uh, you know waste as something that is untouchable or something that is dirty i think that this is the thinking difference that we need to bring in the design education and as design students and practitioners we need to make shift our perspective to bring that compassion it's not only compassion to our environment, it's compassion to the fellow beings, the animals, the plant kingdom. It's, it's all of that, you know, if we can, rather than creating more clutter because there are bigger budgets, we, we start working on newer materials, newer, uh, newer products will be made, newer necessities will be created, which is, uh, which we are very, as designers, we are very good at. Um, I've heard that, you know, shoes, for example, the, which people die for buying shoes, it takes years and years to recycle and it doesn't, it, all components cannot be recycled at all. And you know, you, you know all your uh, Nike ads, just, you know, <laughs> you know uh, all their slogans you can uh, remember. And you know, they are, they are making a fool of us. They're selling so much of material that cannot be recycled. I mean, I, I work in advertising and I have, I have done my part of evil uh, also. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, uh, we, we, we need to understand that, you know, it is, it, it, this, this is a time where we have to make, make a call because it is, uh, the, the resources are depleting. Helium, the, being the lightest uh, uh, you know, element, it, it, it can escape through our gravity. And helium is, in the next 20 to 30 years, helium will be not available. And all your MRI machines and everything is running on that. So, you know, there, there are so much of things which we are insensitive and especially in the policy makers in, in our country. We, it is, we as designers have to take part. We, we cannot say that politics is something that I want to stay away from, you know. In a, in a very, this is again very elite. It's very elite of us to say that, no, I want to stay away from politics. I don't want to talk about politics, you know, it just messes up my mind and, you know, it just brings enmity and, you know, whatever. But policy uh, are important for designers to revive this way things are. We, we cannot be away from that, you know. So we are taught to think of a problem, just, just you know, work with blinds and just, just sort that out. But, you know, that is what I'm trying to, Say that you know we cannot work like that. We need to know the blurry edges of the problem, which is probably the heart and compassion, and all those things can be used. I'm sure you all know about this. It's called kintsugi. It's a Japanese way of uh, when an art, any artifact, which is ex especially ceramics, when they break, they have a very beautiful way of embracing flaws and imperfections by sealing it with gold. It is a very beautiful way of, you know, when, a, when an object is cracked, they, they put it together with sealing it with gold. This, this is a very, very interesting thing because how, we, how it could have become trash in no time and how a different way of looking at it become makes it more valuable. It's something I think it is also compassion to the craftsman, the product that he's made, to the product itself. I, I'm talking 
with my heart, not head. You will say that, you know, what rubbish and how would uh, the craftsman live if you just keep you know, putting together the gold and, you know, you, 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 you don't, this, you know, you don't throw your things. Good design must be beautiful, not in terms of form and other things, which I think I'm sure designers will take care of and circular. And this is most important. You have to, we have to think of how our products are finding the eventual end. What happens after it's used? Where does it go? How do we conserve? Uh, I mean, how does, how does it become resourceful again in some other way? Can it, can it keep uh, moving in a circular fashion where it, it doesn't become waste? It doesn't become trash. It doesn't pollute our environment. It doesn't become a liability for somebody. So this, this is something that people are talking about today and uh, focusing upon. But yeah, yeah, you know, one needs to discriminate and figure out how this, your design can become circular. And that is what education should be focusing upon. And in, for that, you need to bring compassion into picture. It is important to bring the heart and think about it beyond what your intellect and your intelligence allows you to think. So I have this a couple of quotes from Gandhi. There is more to life than simply increasing its speed. It is, it's, it's an important thing to, you know, for, for the metro, for bringing so much efficiency of uh, Mumbai city. I don't know how many hectares of forest which was giving regular rains to Mumbai while the entire Maharashtra was going dry with drought. But Mumbai never had any water cut problems. Mumbai never had any power cut problems because it had its regular supply of rains and, and wildlife and the fauna, flora, everything. Just to increase the speed, we transport and we kind of destroy things we have to do this to our nature. And there are several other projects that are planned for speed. And if one can think whether we are, where are we heading towards? With what is the ultimate goal we are headed towards? Do we really need to increase speed or we need to slow down? Is the question I wanted to ask. I believe in this, very, very much. Compassion is a muscle that gets stronger with use. I always urge students and industry practitioners that, you know, you must have your passion project, but along with your passion project, you must also have a compassion project. You have to run both. You cannot just run, drive behind your passion, but this is what I want to do in life. I mean, this is what I want to make, you know, this is the, this is going to make or break and this is going to, we have that passion thing, but you need to run your compassion project and at Ixorus, uh, we often try to do try always try to do that that you know while we are doing a lot of our passion project we also have to run our compassion project and this is when i would like you to put that poll uh, regarding tokri I would like to know how many of you have seen Tokri. There is no repercussions. There is no, no punishment if you haven't seen it. I, it's just, I would request you to see it. It's on YouTube. It's on Vimeo. Uh, you can easily access it. I would request you to see it because I'm going to talk about it for a minute. Wow. Didn't expect that. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching, all of you. So I would like um, you to watch Tokri because that is our way of expressing compassion and urging people to be compassionate in, the, in this real bad world. And it really stemmed, the story really stemmed out of me being absolutely brash and brutal and insensitive to a child who was trying to 
sell me some baskets. Thinking that she is a beggar girl, I mean, I just kind of shouted at her and I was insensitive in the way I shouted at her. I felt that this is something that we need to bring as a value to people who are going to watch this film to feel for the less privileged and to do and to be kind to them and to be compassionate to them. That's the least you can do, even if you don't help them. I mean, being compassionate is the least one can do. And this was our compassion project. While we are doing many other things, and this, this is something that we've, we undertook all by ourselves, we funded it, and we took eight years to make this 15-minute film. Um, so that, it has traveled around the world and it has, I believe it has made a, a bit of difference in the way people perceive it. I will show a small teaser just for those who haven't seen it. Just while I conclude, I wanted to say one thing that one, one thing that I have realized is that, I mean, and people really talk about is that 80% of environmental impact of a product when you're designing can be, is embedded in the design stage. The choice of whether it should make an environmentally positive or negative impact is 80% of that is attributed or embedded in that, in that design stage. It's where you can make a huge difference. So uh, I, I always look at human body. God has designed our body. I mean, it, it is so perfectly circular. I mean, I'm, I mean in my case, it is uh, literally circular. But yeah, it is, um, it, you know, you, you are born, you, you do so much you serve so much of purpose, you do so much of function, you help, you do a lot of good things in the world. And you, when you go back, you become fertilizer again. And you, on you can become, on, on you can grow many, many trees and many plants and people can, and animals and people also can feed on the fruits from those plants. It's so brilliantly circular. And I think if you can just think of, uh, the brilliant design there of nature. I think we can emulate some ourselves. Thank you so much. I want to just put my last slide for you to, in case any of you want to get in touch with me, I, the only coordinate I can give is probably Instagram uh, or for the studio. And yeah, so this is where you can message and I can get back to you. Uh, have a, our attendees, sorry, have a couple of questions that they want to ask you right away. Sure, sure. sure. So, Senjuti Chakravarti asks, what's your take on uh, physical intelligence quotient and uh, spiritual quotient? Physical intelligence? So, I, I'm sorry, I mean, I, uh, you mean as a person, your intelligence versus spiritual intelligence? A take on both physical quotient and uh, spiritual quotient so, in relation to compassion that you were speaking of. No, it's not very clear to me as a question. Maybe I'm, I'm an ignorant person, but uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, it didn't really clearly uh, articulate what compassion is one. I mean, how you, how you, you feel like 
doing something for others how you can bring kindness uh, evoke kindness in for others in keeping yourself last and you know thinking about others all those things so uh, i i i feel uh, it is um, it is not a physical intelligence and spiritual intelligence i think it is anjuti if you could probably elaborate the question and ask us again we will probably yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry that, that no, it may be a very <laughs> very clear question but for me yeah yeah it's okay so uh, another hi, attendee hi. of ours guy is also there hi darpana it's wonderful yeah so pragya oh, asks ha huh, versus spiritual intelligence so pragya asks sir i have a passion project as a compassion project but sometimes if that doesn't work for the money minting thinking of a business often as a student i have to take a call on this and i end up choosing something which is suited for industry how do i maintain that balance you know i i have a feeling that compassion keeping compassion as an element in design is not going to bring your commercial prospects down it is not going to bring your financial pros- prospects down it may take time but it may it it may yield you a much better prospects than uh, than a purely commercial venture that you are uh, pursuing that's what i i believe you know i i believe um, you you need to bring that as an important element in your work in your workspace in your community i i feel even designers as a community should be compassionate to each other I, i i find it hugely lacking in, in the designers community also we are cynics we are cynics so first order we, we it's good to be cynic when it comes to questioning but uh, we 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 also are pessimist in a, in a large extent where we think of which is also fine in the design process way where you think of the worst also but we we don't appreciate other people's work we tend to not we, we even if somebody is doing great we always look at it with uh, a cynicism and try and say that you know but it's not you know we we have such sort of notions in us so i i think compassion is something that we need to build as second nature uh, or first nature for that matter and of course i think uh, you will you will definitely um, benefit out of it i'm not saying it is going to give you instant uh, results there are so many people who are working um, and you know they they feel so satisfied mentally um, i mean of course paying bills are, is is very important aspect i'm not denying that i mean i i, I don't i don't uh, I, i don't believe that you know uh, you know you you need to pay bills by talking compassion i mean that's only only saints and others can do they can charge uh, separately for that but you know uh, you you need to look at work properly and you you may have to do some work uh, which of course you should justify under your box of which has compassion as a as a as a lens and in your lens compassion should also be present then i think uh, you will choose better your choices will be better it is just i am embedding this thought in, in 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 your mind so that you know you don't go ahead and start making cars and shoes and what nots when you when you get out of design institutes you know we don't need them i mean what is the necessity of what is the need don't create needs which are not required because you want to promote some company and some com- commercial aspects of another another entity um so- Uh, another attendee puru fialok asks why is it that things that drive us to make a difference are mostly out of a place of deeply affected emotional space like in the case of tokri compassion is in a way coming from a place of guilt quote yeah. unquote maybe i'm not so sure so yeah it is it is why why does it come from there is what uh, uh, puru so i mean probably i wouldn't be talking about compassion today if i didn't go through that feeling of guilt that <coughs> i would be i would be as arrogant and as harsh and whatever as i i i would have been back then but i i look at everything in a very different light so that is the difference that it makes i mean i'm uh, so i i i really feel what 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 is the second part of the question that it is from the from guilt uh, deeply affected emotional space 
Yeah, I, I think uh, the transformation in a person would be triggered from such, um, such sort of emotional um, realizations, right? I mean, you, you, if, if one didn't go through that sort of realization, one wouldn't have probably figured out the importance of and the gaps that design has uh, or design education has where compassion is missing. Um, you know, now we feel that that is an important thing. When I, I was studying, also I didn't, uh, I mean, we used to look at case studies of what people used to do in villages as in a very, very comfortable space where we never had to get our hands dirty. So, um, I mean, I started going to Dharavi to, I mean, just following my wife uh, when she was going for learning pottery. And I rediscovered a whole new, I mean, th they are massive designers. The guys who are sitting there and, you know, creating, you know, within their constraints, they have created an ecosystem that works so perfectly for them. And as you know, that, that Dharavi is the first place to get out of uh, uh, Corona infection while the entire world was worried that that will be the worst affected. The, the, the biggest affected in Mumbai was the most elite crowd. So you know, that itself shows how much design thinking and compassion plays a big part in the way they are living. If somebody didn't have food, there were people who were just giving them the food that they made at home. I mean, it, the, the mindset is, is, is changing. I'm talking about compassion, but the design of that space, because of the restrictions, the survival mode, everything uh, being on, they, they had to like uh, evoke a lot of such aspects to cope with that. So if, definitely an emotional uh, impact helps in, 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 in a sort of transformation. And I'm, I'm able to relay this information to you so that it comes to you at a very early stage at the student level. And it's something that uh, we never felt even as a student community. Uh, we, and uh, I remember whoever was uh, compassionate and um, you know, in that sense, we, we always connected with them. I think it, it works in the teaching also. Uh, I think the way you are connecting emotionally with people, than being so intelligently connecting. I mean, you you may get admiration, but you may not be able to connect with people. You may not be able to inspire. I mean, I I remember some of the people uh, who I connected with were out from outside, and some of them from uh, an ID who have spent nights and days to help me uh, with certain documentation. I'm hugely indebted to them and I have a connect with them. So I think uh, it's it, that EQ, IQ thing when you are talking about, I, I, I feel EQ plays a huge role in, in, uh, in, you know, in imparting that sense of compassion among students also, from the teacher to student that way too. So sir, now that you've mentioned Dharavi and uh, your influences on your characters, so um, there's a confession that I need to make. Huh. I've been a huge, huge, huge fan of your work since childhood. And while I was preparing this uh, introduction document of yours uh, 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 for the last couple of days, I started questioning myself as to why, I am, I, why am I so uh, smitten by uh, this uh, prospect that I'm going to be interviewing Mr. Suresh Arya. And then I found an answer which said, you've been watching his commercials all through your life since okay. childhood and some of the most important and uh, 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 most impressionable characters were from the commercials that he's made. And now that after I've uh, come of age and I've become a, become an ad filmmaker myself. And then I, 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 and then I understood that a lot of writing that I do for television commercials has been inspired yeah. by whatever I've seen of Mr. Suresh Ariyat's work. Yeah. This was a realization that I had about a couple of days ago while I was uh, starting to interact with you. And then I asked myself, why is it that I, why, why is it that I never realized this all, all through the, the, these years and it is only now? I, 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 I went back to your website and watched a few commercials again. Not that I have not seen them a thousand times already, but once I watched them, I started to uh, 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 connect dots and I understood that the kind of music that you use in your commercials the kind of characters that you've designed, the kind of colors that you use, the production design that is done. 
be it the Suleka classified commercial, the Google Tanjavur paintings commercial, be it any of these, uh, there is this certain kind of a relatability to it for the Indian audiences, especially that it it never does feel like you're actually selling a product or a brand to the audience. So when all of it is coming uh, across as so relatable to to the audience, it, would it be wrong on my part to say that only because you were so inclusive, so uh, ready to absorb the culture, the quirks, the behavioral aspects of every uh, sort of a society and habitat that you you observe day in and day out that uh, in turn turned out to be uh, yeah, come course. across I as think, compassion. I, I think uh, observation is one of the most important uh, faculties that as a filmmaker uh, you need to you need to have. So I mean that 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 was always. Uh, I mean, like I always record my observations, I sketch or write or whatever, in, in whatever way. So uh, that, that always helps uh, Akhil. I mean, it, 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 and you know, the love for folk, folk music, folk art, all those things, it's people's art, people's, it's the most simplest thing for people to understand. So believing in the folk, uh, to the core, folk tunes are simple for enough to, uh, for it to become, um, you know, it, it, for, for it to become a, like something that is hummable by everybody. So, you know, that, that is the simple simplicity which we always seek in the, from around us. So I think probably that's how you are feeling like that. I, I can't put too much of IQ based logic behind it, but yeah. But, but would it be wrong in calling, uh, saying that it is because you are a compassionate filmmaker or a writer mm -hmm. or a producer, that yeah. you're able to absorb so much from your surroundings and then put it across, give it back to people in a way that they're able to relate and uh, uh, you know, respond to it in the way that you want to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, see, as earnest as your uh, uh, work is the reactions also. So, I mean, like the love that we are getting for Tokri is also something that we never expected. It's, it's an artistic film. It's a short film uh, done. But we never expected so many people to watch it and, you know, feel for it. So it, it is uh, as much as you put in your honesty, I think that's the way people also react back. Yeah. I think there are too many, a lot of questions. Uh, you know, if you want to take a couple of them or that's it. Yeah, we have time for just one more question. Okay. Um, so Avidut Prabhakar asks, I have a, a long question actually, not sure if it uh, makes sense or not. Sometimes while working on some ideas, we tend to overthink and go on and on about visualizing it. That results in very less output, but more thought process. What do you suggest, what do you suggest to do when we work on, the, work on some idea and want to stop overthinking the concept and start executing it? So how do you stop when to... I, no, I, I think one of the easiest thing to do is to, uh, when you're thinking about the idea, try and prototype it. If you can, what, in whatever form it is, if you just make a dummy prototype, you will know whether it is good or not, whether you need to think further or not. Uh, I would, I strongly believe that, yeah, this is again coming from our IQ training, uh, that you shouldn't fall in love with your first idea, uh, because it carries a lot of your past ideas, notions, all those things. See, it may have a lot of heart, but it may not be having too much of, uh, you know, the functionality about it. So you need to think more, you need to look at more options, um, but it, it's good to like kind of, uh, uh, prototype it before you kind of uh, negate it. So, you know, you, you get, get, get these ideas, you start putting it down, you put, get another one, you put, put it down. So you will be able to see it in one way. Okay. This is, this is an idea that works well. This is an idea that, but you know, maybe I should take that part of this, it, all those permutation and combinations you can try. If you can, if you actually can do small product in films case, we can do storyboards and uh, all those things and we can quickly see it, whether it is working or not. In, in, when you're creating a product, maybe you'll have to just create a good drawing or a render or maybe uh, create a mock-up or something and see. And then you can go back to the drawing board and think more. But I think uh, procrastinating is not a good thing. Without doing anything, keep on thinking and thinking and thinking will not yield anything. This is a problem with a lot of people, where, including me, that I, I think a lot and I have a starting problem. So I thought about this presentation today, but I just sat down just half an hour before and I kind of put together my thought. 
So it, it is really procrastinating. It is really you're thinking about it, but you're not actually crystallizing it and putting it together. Many people who are bright, intelligent, would actually make the presentation two days before, and they would be re pretty relaxed about it today. So, you know, that, that is, the, that is a very uh, different way. Uh, uh, I think you, you should definitely plan better. You, you put your drafts together, and then you can choose which is a better working one. So I hope that answers your question, attendees. So we have come to the end of the Q&A session. And now I have a, a personal anecdote for Mr. Suresh. Sir, uh -huh. now that you have discussed compassion for about an hour and given your perspective, I think I have a story for you that I think uh, uh, that can make another tokri. OK. OK. So this is from my personal experience. Uh -huh. In 2013, after I uh, finished uh, film school from hmm. Whistling Woods International, the first ever company that I had applied to was Eeksaurus. Oh, -ho. and I did not get accepted. What are you <laughs> I, I didn't get a, re a return mail also. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to draw a parallel to Tokri and assume that Suresh sir just shooed me away. <laughs> So now out of guilt, do I, can I expect you to design a character in one of your <laughs> upcoming short films? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this is where um, I think people go wrong that, you know, when they write to studio, they feel that I go through all the mains. Uh, it is, it has happened in the past also that, you know, we miss out really good candidates uh, because they, 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 I mean, it, it, it goes to wrong hands and, you know, maybe they, they you know because I don't have that sort of time to actually screen. I, I mean, what you're saying is a very I was just, I was just pulling your legs, sir. You know, <laughs> but I, I, I got, it, it really got pulled. So I, there are more <laughs> guilt confessions coming out so because of that, because there are many people who talk about it. So, uh, yeah. And uh, it's not, it's not a nice thing. I mean, I'll definitely look at, send me, send us your photos. We can make a new character out of you. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So it was a pleasure talking to you and participating in this webinar. As a fanboy, I think it is a privilege for me to have had this opportunity to speak to you for such a long time. Thank you we, so much, Rakil. I hope uh, it was, uh, it, this is a very different sort of a format I took, which I generally don't uh, talk, talk like this because, I, like I said, it's mostly a visual sort of presentation. But I felt it was important to impart this sort of a thought, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, like I said, I don't have answers. I just have questions and I hope it has, uh, uh, it would create some sort of an impact. It can instigate some thinking. It can provoke some thoughts amongst the budding designers and practitioners. That, that, that serves my purpose. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank we thank all the participants for attending today's webinar with ADI Wacom Design Challenge 2020 and Finding Purpose. And we uh, hope you have great takeaways from Suresh sir's session. But before we part, let me let you in on a tiny open secret. Our guest for tomorrow's webinar is Aditi Shah Aman, a textile designer par excellence. To understand what it takes to design and build for transitioning into a circular economy, make sure you tune in with us at 5.30 p.m. tomorrow. It is very important to have uh, heroes. And uh, one of my biggest, uh, heroes in filmmaking has been Mr. Suresh Arya since my childhood. And uh, today I got a chance, got an opportunity to interact with him and the last two days and probably an hour after this, which I'm going to, where I'm going to be messaging him and uh, <laughs> picking his brain. So I think this opportunity was given to me by uh, being a member of ADI for an, for access to an year long supply of more such awesome talks and live events. Please become a member of ADI. You never know which hero of yours you might run into, or you know if you if you have someone like Mr. Suresh and you can uh, get him to uh, make him feel guilty, you might become a character in one of his films and become a superstar also. So, <laughs> if you're not an ADI member yet, do visit our website at www.adi.org.in and become a member today. Our student membership costs just rupees 500. And in case you think 500 is too much and you do not want to spend that kind of money or do not have that money, design your own currency and send us a printout of it. We'll, you know, understand. Thank you all for joining us today. And we thank our speaker, Mr. Suresh Ariyat, uh, for taking out time and coming and talking to all.